Okay, I've rinsed out my bag after about three or four usages. Notice you want it really, really clean when you rinse it out. You can rinse it out from here and you can also turn it upside down when it's clogged and blow it out with your trigger sprayer and work it back and forth and get it really, really clean. Okay, our mortar is ready to strike. Go over here. If you look at this, I, I touch it and it's firm and it's leaving a fingerprint. It's not rock hard. It's still giving a little bit, but it's leaving the finger point. Pardon me, fingerprint. That that's a little too wet. I just squirted that this area. That's too wet. See that? But this is not. This is just right. From this point forward, the harder it gets, the more you're going to be fighting the strike. So watch how easy this mud falls away. Vertical joints first. Notice how it falls away. This is called not fighting the strike. Okay, corner. We don't want to pull the corner out. Here, I'll pull the corner out. Watch what happens. Pull the corner out. Now I'm going to not pull the corner out. I'm going to come in. I'm going to go around the other side and go the other direction. Do that with your corners. I'm going to go in and hit this little dab over here that made it around the corner. Do that with your corners. Oh, where did I pull that corner out? Oh, right here. So if you do pull a corner out, you can get some mud that's a little that has stiffened up a bit. That's stiffer than normal. And you can pack it in and then do it correctly. That's how you handle that. So, the reason you do the verticals first is because you'll notice it puts a groove on the horizontal and you want to tool that horizontal out last and then once I'm done with this I'm going to show you the final dressing on this just keep the camera running Doug Do not want to fight the strike. It's miserable. We didn't put any dye in this mortar because this is painted brick and these this mortar is going to get painted. This whole thing is going to get painted after we're done. You have to wait 30 days for any mortar work to set up before you paint. And we only use Sherwin-Williams masonry paint or Sherwin-Williams super paint exclusively. We don't deal with any other paint company but Sherwin-Williams. And we are not being paid for this advertisement. Okay. Stay there, Doug. So you can see we've got protrusions here, and this hall needs to be cleaned up. It looks ugly. We call these nerfty nards. So we're going to knock the nerfty nards off. Anything with a straight edge. Trim it. See how it's just falling away? Trim it. Nice soft brush, soft paint brush, or fairly medium bristle. Brush it, see how it cleans all that off. And then critical point after you do that, second strike, smooth it again. You want this smooth finish because the smoother this finish is, the less water can permeate the joint, like in a driving rainstorm. Mortar that gets wet and goes through freeze-thaw cycles breaks down. Sometimes people put a rough finish on their mortar joints for aesthetics. 
If you're going to do that, waterproof your chimney with siloxane. You should waterproof your chimney or your brickwork anyway if you can. If you're painting, you don't need to waterproof. The paint acts as the waterproofing agent. You want to prepare everything per manufacturer's specs and you want to keep the paint maintained. It goes for five or ten years, starts to peel, do touch-ups on the peel. Don't let it just go because when it goes, it's a mess. If you're going to paint stuff, keep the paint maintained. And there's the finished product. That's what you want your joints to look like. This is a concave strike. We used a barrel striker. It's round. It put a concavity into it. There's also flat strikes. <coughs> There's various types of strikes. So if you're doing some repair work, look at your mortar joint and see, do you have a concave finish? Is it a flat finish? Or they just took a flat striker and it's flat. You don't see an indentation. Those are things to consider. All right. Thanks for watching.